Well, what could we say? At least the, the Socialist Democrats believe in delivering for their base, right? <laughs> you know, Chris, these bills have been kicking around for many, many years. In fact, the question of D.C. statehood has been around uh, for uh, for literally uh, two centuries. Uh, you know, the current status is they have one representative uh, in the United States Congress, non-voting, that's uh, Eleanor Holmes Norton, uh, and uh, they have the same number of electoral votes as the least populous state. That's what the 23rd Amendment said. This really is about the U.S. Senate, I think, as you just correctly pointed out. And uh, you kind of wonder, since uh, Joe Biden got 92 percent compared to 5 percent for Donald Trump, you kind of wonder if they'd be as anxious to do this if it was the other way around uh, now that the Senate is 50-50. Uh, is I do understand, you know, with 692,000 people, uh, they don't have a representative in the, in the Senate. Uh, so there's a fair question about that. But obviously, it would be a complete slam dunk for the Democrats with 92 percent, and it would tip the balance of power in favor of the Democrats in the U.S. Senate. I think that's why they're bringing it back up with such a force this time. Colonel West, on the other hand, you've got Democrats wanting to add states to the union, and the, uh, you are the Texas GOP chair, of course, and inside of Texas, there's a debate going on right now. One representative has introduced Texit legislation. Uh, wanting to get a sense from the people of Texas, hey, should we stay or should we go as part of the union? What do you think about Texit? Well, it's good to be with you, Chris, and it's good to be with Governor McDonald. Uh, I have always said I would rather have Texas lead than secede, but uh, the people here in Texas have a right to be able to voice their opinions on a critical issue that they're facing right now, especially in light of all of the onerous, intrusive executive orders that are coming down from uh, Vice President Joe Biden. So what Representative Kyle Biederman's legislation uh, does, it just talks about having a vote on the Senate floor to put something on the ballot that will be uh, part of the ballot ballot initiatives in this November 2021. And I don't understand why anyone would feel that they need to prevent the people from having a voice in something that, you know, is part of the Texas Constitution. And so if you don't want to see it done, you just vote no. But you cannot prevent the people from having a voice. Yeah. And you know what, folks? And just so you're clear, Texas is not talk. They're not talking about revolution. They're talking about what happened over in the United Kingdom, uh, the UK leaving the European Union. Nice negotiated settlement. You know, it's been fun, but we, we're tired of not being masters in our own home. And that's what the UK did. They left the European Union. Gentlemen, I want to ask you both to weigh in on this. We've been uh, focused on this vote that was held by the Republican Party last night. Liz Cheney enjoys 10 percent support among Republicans back in her home, her home state because of that inexplicably stupid vote that she made to uh, impeach President Trump without having all of the facts. Yet the leadership of the Republican Party says, we don't care what the people say. We're in charge here. We're going to keep her in leadership. Governor McDonald, uh, a little tone deaf, uh, or maybe a lot tone deaf, on uh, the part of the Republican Party in Washington? I think there's two separate questions. One is, she, should she be in the leadership in the uh, House Republican caucus as being one of a very small number to vote against uh, not only the party, but against the president, which is a different question than whether the people of Wyoming want to keep her in office. And that'll be a question for another day when she's up uh, for re-election. Uh, Chris, I, you know, these, these, are, these are tough calls. I mean, everybody called this a vote of conscience. Uh, I, I know we all like to keep everybody on, on the team. There were 10 of people that, uh, that defected. Uh, you know, I think Liz Cheney is an, is an honest person who votes the way she thinks. But the question is, does that still uh, entitle her to be in, uh, in leadership of Republican caucus when, you know, 95 percent plus uh, vote the other way because they thought it was wrong uh, to bring up these uh, ridiculous uh, allegations against the president for incitement when there's no facts that really bear that out? So, I, I mean, I think that I, I defer to the Republican caucus on that. But the people of Wyoming will weigh in next time on what, what they think. Yeah, Colonel West, let me just ask you about that, because it seems the Republican Party gave a big, wet kiss to this idea that leaders should go up to Washington, D.C. and do their own dang thing and, and to heck with what the people back home think, which is exactly what Liz Cheney did with her vote. 
Well, I will, you know, side again with Governor McDonald in saying that they will make the decision back in Wyoming. As a matter of fact, I believe they already have two individuals that have declared to run against uh, Congresswoman Cheney in the uh, primary election for 2022. But it does beg the question, how can someone be in a leadership position of the Republican caucus when they took a vote that was against about 95 percent of that caucus? And if I had been up there as a member of Congress where I was 10 years ago, uh, I would have voted for her to not be in that leadership position because in a leadership position, you're supposed to reflect the voice of the body, which is the uh, Republican conference. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, I appreciate the discussion back and forth. I, I am always enlightened by our discussions. Uh